Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Oliver Weedmeyer at Ollie underscore all caps on Twitter. Uh, I don't do Excel videos. I'm not an Excel video guy. However, um, I do stock trading videos. So if you are interested in stock trading, it's probably why you're here. Um, this trade log is for um, anybody. However, um, it is really tailored to TD Ameritrade or Trade or Thinkorswim um, users. Um, I do focus on weekly market analysis videos. I provide a watch list. I also provide um, exactly what stocks I'm buying and why I'm buying them. Um, I show you scanners I use. I show you different charting platforms, um, different um, stop loss uh, techniques, risk management. So uh, everything stock related um, uh, specifically for beginners and for those who are trading part time. Um, can't sit in front of the screen all day long and I try to help to uh, give you tools to help you um, um, on your journey and better um, manage your risk so um, I'm about to show you a uh, something that I've worked on for over six years um, I'm showing you um, the trade logs that I use to um, analyze all of my previous trades so um, it will require um, a little bit of Excel knowledge um, I do use Google Sheets, so let's just jump into it. So before I get going, um, I will show you my personal trade log. Um, this is the trade summary page. It's the year today statistics, statistics by month. It shows you the number of trades, your win rate, uh, profit loss, your account growth. It also shows you your average uh, risk to reward ratio. It gives you year to date st 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 statistics. Here's the trade log that I use, I will help you build it. Um, so this is gonna be a long video, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. And then this is the dashboard. Uh, but for today, we are only gonna go over the trade log. So uh, we're gonna start a new tab, um, name it trade log. Um, G1, you're gonna type in starting balance. And in H1, you're going to type however much money is in your balance. Or if you want to retro um, uh, input your trades, you would start, you would type the starting balance of um, where your account started at the beginning of the year. Um, J1, you're going to type in current balance. J2, you're going to type in risk. Uh, the first formula of the day will be. Um, in K1, the formula is going to be equals sum, then the G column plus H1. So what that looks like is you're going to go equals sum. You're going to click the G. Oh, no. Parenthesis, click the G. Close it. And then plus, and then you click H1 and hit enter. So what that's going to do, it's going to calculate all of the gross profit to the starting balance. So um, you make 10 bucks, you make 15 bucks, you make 30 bucks. That's going to get added on to this, which will give you how much you have, what you started with, with and then what you've earned or lost. Um, for your risk, here's another formula. It's going to be equals K1 times, and then you're going to put in whatever risk that you like i like to risk a half a percent so that's why i have 0.5 percent some people can do 0.75 75 percent um or even one percent but i uh, right now since we are in a choppy market bear market really i'm doing a half a percent so um right here i just have a merged cell um so what that looks like is you are going to uh, click on b1 I should also note, I take A I take A, and I just make it a little bit tiny like that. I just drag it to the left. So you're going to click on B1. Then you're going to hold down Shift and click on F3. That's going to highlight this whole box. You come over here, and you're going to type in Merge All. Click Merge All, and then you'll name your log whatever you want to name your log. You'll do the same for this section here, G, H, and I. Um, and then you can just merge it. And then you can also do this little section here, J and K. You can just clicking drag and then merge. Okay, so um, for B4, 
through J4, you're going to type um, date, ticker, number of shares bought, average price bought, average price sold, gross PL dollar sign, gross PL percent, RR, and results. And then you can obviously change whatever colors you want, um, but this is how I do it. Um, so once you're done here, and we're going to leave this alone for now, um, I divide my sections up with these big black bars. So you just can click on J, hold shift, click M, and it'll highlight all of this. And then I just do a fill color of black. Um, so I know that this is separate from the trade log. Um, for N1, you're going to type in account growth. And then for O, you're going to do equals parenthesis parenthesis K1 minus H1 close parenthesis divided by H1. So that is going to um, show you the difference between um, where you started and where you are and then divide it and it will uh, come out as a percent. So you want to um, click on here and then go to percent. Okay. So once you, and that's all you have to do over here. So again, we're going to do another divider, P, P, Q, and R. You can just click, hold shift, P, Q, R, and then do your blackout. Okay. So this is very important. Okay. So um, for me, I have S through AA all merged uh, just the same way we merged it over here. I have it merged over here. So. Uh, we can do it together. You're going to click on S1, hold down shift, go down to AA3. That should highlight all of these. Then you just go merge all. And then this is what I have it titled as transaction history, copy and paste here. So this is what you're going to import from TD Ameritrade. So on the TD Ameritrade website, you'll go to transactions you'll filter a specific time and then you'll come in here and then you're going to click on S4 and then hit paste. And it should paste exactly like this date, transaction, description, quantity, symbol, price, commission, amount, and reg fee. Um, and then all of this will be in the same exact formula. Now this, I obviously have um, inputted myself because um, I don't want to show you um, every transaction that I've done on my uh, personal portfolio. So this is a way that we can just do it real um, elementary and you can understand so it doesn't get too confusing. So these are just some sample trades. Um, and so once you're done here, we can, um, that should be, okay. So um, once we're done here, we will go back. We'll uh, we'll come back to this in a minute. Um, actually, you know what? This is what we'll do. We'll go to A, B. We'll block that out. Block out this section here. This is um, A, C, one through three. Um, and then I just have this note here um, to remind me because this is a step that you're going to have to do every time you import transactions. Um, Actually, let me show you real quick um, how this looks. Once everything's set up, you enter date, you hit tab. Now you do a ticker, you hit tab, and then everything will automatically come into place. So it'll automatically calculate the shares you bought, the average price you bought, the average price you sold, um, and if you notice, this has two cells. So it's one buy, two cells. So it will average everything. So it would be multiple buys, multiple cells. And then it can even um, calculate for if you trade the same name more than once. So we'll get to all of that. But for now, I just wanted to give you a heads up um, to exactly show you um, what it is when this whole thing is done, what it looks like. Um, and then your trade summary will be automatically updates. See? Pretty cool. Okay. So once you have all this done, um, let me just 
real quick. I was just doing this as an example. Okay. So you come over here to AC and it's gonna be AC one, two, three, and you're gonna make this a, um, a merged cell. And then this is how I, this is the instruction. So you're gonna to need to use this every, you're gonna to need to use these instructions every time you import trades. Um, which is why I recommend doing it either uh, once a week or once every two weeks, um, maybe even once a month. But you don't, don't you definitely don't want to do it every day. It would be too much. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to first have to make this a filter. So the way you do that is you click, you'd click date, you hold shift, you click reg fee, and you just click that button there, and that will make it a filter you can tell because it has these triangles so um number one you want a filter description to sold so you go here you're going to hit clear you know type in sold then you're going to hit select all now it's filtering so it's only showing you the solds okay and this is very important um you're going to multiply so you're going to go equals the quantity times negative one, okay? Then you're gonna take that, you're gonna click this button and drag it down to here. Now this is showing the negative version of this. The reason for that is because when you do the average for a sold, it can't, or I'm sorry, when you do the average for bought, it can only do positive buys. So if you're doing, the average for everything, buys and sells, it will average both buys and sells, but you only want to average for buys. So that'll make sense in just a second. So you're going to click and drag again like that. Now you're going to drag. Okay, so you drag down. We just did that. So you're going to click and drag. Sorry. You're going to go control C. So you're going to copy that. And then you're going to come back over here. Click on V6. And you're going to go file. So you're going to go edit, paste, values only. So now that makes these negative and that makes these positive. So the reason why that's important, you can uh, clear, select all. The reason why that's important is now if it's a buy, it's a positive number. And if it's a sold, it's a negative number. So that'll make sense once we get over to the formulas. So these should be positives and the solds should be negatives. Okay, so you're gonna come over here and under shares bought, you're gonna go, if is blank B5, that's saying that if B5 is blank, then make it a blank. So if is blank B5, parenthesis, print, um, quote, quote, and then you're gonna do a sum filter. So that means we're going to filter for V5 all the way down. So V5 all the way down. So that's what that looks like, comma. So we're going to filter the symbols. That's what we're going to filter. So if um, we need to make sure that the symbols are in W, okay equals C5. So that means, so this is C5. So now this is only going to filter for ABC. If this said AAA, then it would give you the price for AAA. ABC. Now it's filtering. Now it's only going to calculate the number of shares bought for ABC. So here's a formula. Um, just pause it and you can go ahead and type it in. Um, what this is saying that is if B is blank, then leave this blank. Um, that's what this means. If B5 is blank, then leave it blank. And it's going to sum the filter for um, the quantities, okay, that match this symbol, C5. C5 is this symbol. And only for the positive numbers, so that's very important. So this needs to be this needs to be positive um, zero, greater than zero. 
So that's going to be your shares bought. For average price bought, this is the formula. You're going to get the weighted average, and it's going to filter for the price that you bought based on the symbol. That's what the W is. But only the symbols that are, again, greater than zero. So that's why we had to make these numbers um, for the solds negative. So it's going to average the price for the symbols for the positive numbers. So, so here's the formula now. Are you done? You can just move on to average sold. So it's going to be the same exact as E5, except this portion here is going to be for AC, which is why we need to make this positive number. So now it's not doing the average of this, it's doing the average of AC. Okay, very important. So here's the formula. You can pause it, type it in. Moving on to gross. Here's a formula. If B5 is blank, then you're going to multiply D times F minus D5 times E5. And that's how you get it. And then in order to do the, uh, the green, you do format cell, conditional format. Um, value is greater than zero. You would do um, G5. You want to do this whole column um, and H all the way down. Um, so you could really uh, make this last number uh, as big as you wanted to because you want to go all the way down. Greater than zero. Um, here are your different green options. You're going to do this green, and then the letter is being a dark green, hit done. And then you would do the same for red, but it would be less than zero. And here are your red options. Okay. And here's the gross PL as a percent. Here's the formula, and you want to just make sure that it's a percent. Okay. For RR, here's the formula. And again, this is going to base the risk off of uh, whatever this risk is. And then the W is this is a formula. If this is a positive number, then it's a W. If it's a negative number, it will be an L. And so for each one of these, you're going to click and drag down all the way as far as you want for all of them. Um, except for the date and the ticker. So you're going to click and drag, 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 click and drag. Now, what you're going to have to do now is as you input your trades, you're going to have to type in the date and the ticker. So we just imported the January and the, the exact date doesn't matter. It's just the month is what really matters. So we've imported the ABC. So now we're going to import the February trade. So you type in two slash one and then hit tab. Uh, we traded... Um, a, A, A. So you can type in A, A, A and hit tab. And it's going to calculate this. Okay. A, so we, we bought 125, we sold 25, then we sold 100. Okay. And we want to move on to um, another trade. 3-1. So we traded again. Okay. So this is important. So we traded ABC again. So if we type in ABC, it's going to give us the same information here because it's calculating all of the ABC trades. But these are two separate trades. So what you want to do is for one trade, you type in ABC, and then you'll have to do this yourself. So you type in the one. So now it's going to be ABC. So for all of these trades associated with this 
trade, you're going to have to type in a one. Okay. And then for all of the trades associated with this, you're going to have to type in a two, ABC two. I had this type in because I was practicing this, ABC two. Okay. In this way, it's going to recognize it as a separate trade and it's going to calculate it separately, which means that when you come over here, now this is, so this is, remember this is picking up from that over here. So we, it's not, it doesn't pick up an ABC because there's no ABC. So we have to go ABC one and now we'll pick it up an ABC two. And now we'll pick up two separate trades. And the last one is gonna be ABB. Okay, so that should be it. Okay, now we're going to calculate the cumulative data. So in order to do that, we're going to block out AF, AG, one, two, three. And then we're going to, in AF4, type in cumulative dollar sign. And then in AG4, type in cumulative percent. So the formula for the very first uh, column here, AF5, the formula is going to be and again, we're going to do the if is blank, and then we're going to add our starting of our starting um, amount by the um, pro uh, profit loss on the first trade. So um, you're going to do um, open parenthesis dollar sign H dollar sign one. So what that's saying is we are taking the $25,000 that we started with, and we're going to add um, this profit loss to that. So the reason why we do the dollar signs is to lock it in so that this doesn't um, move when we drag it. So that's going to be for AF5, um, but the formula will change for the rest of the um, column here. So um, for AF6, it's going to be, again, um, if is blank, and then it's going to be C6 plus AF5. And then what we'll do is we'll click and drag that. And that's going to calculate um, the profit loss for this trade against the previous dollar amount. Um, and then this will calculate G7's trade against the previous amount all the way down forever and ever and ever. Now for the cumulative percent, um, the AG5 is going to be this formula here. Um, again, we'll do if is blank. And then we're going to do, uh, we're going to do the percent change. So the way we do that is um, the, um, the price, which is AF5, right? I'm sorry. Um, AF5 minus H1, which is the H1, which is the balance, divided by the balance. So that's going to give us the percent change between $25,000 and $25,085. 85, yeah, $25,085. So the difference between $25,000 and $25,085 is 0.34. And then um, the reason why we need to make sure that the dollar signs are here is to lock in this. So the only thing change is um, the cumulative account balance. So you're going to click and drag, and then it will automatically calculate all the data. And as uh, and this will update automatically as more trades are entered. Now. Uh, this is not necessary. This is just something that I like to do. Um, and what this does is it takes all of this data, but it removes the actual prices. So if you wanted to post a picture on Twitter or something, you're not showing um, how much you spent uh, because people um, you know, might want to be a little bit more private. So it only shows the ticker. So you want to go equal C5, and then you want to click and drag. So that's going to be C5. C6, C7, C8. So this is going to be C9, right? That's going to be C10 because you click and drag. So this just goes the entry equals E5. The exit equals 
F5, and then the profit loss as a percent. Okay. And here's the formula for that. And then here's the risk reward um, equals I5. And then I have different um, conditional formats uh, based on kind of parameters. So, so this was a really big um, percent gain. Um, but the RR wasn't super big, so that's why it doesn't have a, a green background. Um, this RR, I took a, a too big of a loss on this, so that's why it's a dark red. And this was a small risk, um, so a small loss, so that's why it's just that. And then this is just a uh, middle-of-the-road decent trade, so that's why it's black. Um, and that is it. Um, Whenever you go to import more trades again, you have to make sure that um, you do this section because um, the quantities have the sold quantities have to be negative here and positive here for sold only. Um, and again, the reason for that is because if this is trading, if this is doing the average weighted for all figures, a positive number, right? Um, then it would do the weighted average for sold also. So it would be sold, it would be average weight for bought and sold. Um, so this way, now it knows only to do the average weight for positive numbers, right? Which are the bought. Now, for the average price sold, it can't, it cannot calculate a negative um average weight, which is why we have to calculate it as a positive number, which is why it's calculating on AC, not V. So that's what the big difference is between bought. It's calculating an average for V and for, for sold, it's calculating for AC. So that is it. Um, if you have any questions, please don't, don't hesitate to ask. Um, and I will make a second and third video for the dashboard and the trade summary. But for now, um, this is enough homework for you. I hope this um, was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.